Amen. Let's give a hand for Pastor Tyler. You can turn it down just a little bit. That might just get a little bit more excited. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. Just such a blessing and such a good feel. Amen. Of worship. Amen. How many have been blessed? Amen. Yeah. Come on. I mean, that's, that's just breaking yeah. things down and changing the atmosphere. Amen. So we can get out of the flesh and into the spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But I just want to just say this before I get into anything uh, tonight is that... Uh, it's hot. <laughs> it is hot in Hawaii. I gotta say it like this. It's hot. <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's just sucking the life out of me. I mean, when you see the pictures in the brochures of Hawaii, it don't look hot. I mean, you know, but man, that's so deceiving. But anyways, <laughs> paradise, but man, I had no idea it was just gonna suck life. But anyways, no, I'm I'm enjoying it. I just gotta get used to it and and so, but anyways, it's good to be here, and it's just such a blessing and an honor to speak to you guys, to minister. This is a four-part, so just to let you guys know that it's just not something that I really felt just to kind of come with one or whatever. The Lord has really downloaded some things in my spirit, so this is part one of what we're going to be uh, dealing with and talking about. So I use as my, um, uh, this is of course connecting as one, and I, I so appreciate this theme, but we're going to be talking about connecting and dealing with uh, connect, connecting right now, rather before we get into the other part of it. But I want to start off with the theme scripture I'm going to be using for probably uh, all four, the four services that I'm going to be speaking at. And we're going to start here in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 1 through 3. Now, I usually would pray over my sermon, but we prayed over my sermon. Amen. Amen. So I got the unction to function. Amen. Woo! Praise yeah. God. So I'm, I'm ready and, and I'm believing God. Now, this is just as fresh in my heart, and I hope that I'm able to deliver this um, into your heart and that just the, what the Lord has spoken to me that I'll be able to communicate that. Amen. So as we look at the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, therefore the prisoner of the Lord um, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Amen. Verse 2, with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. And verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the peace in the bond, I'm sorry, the, keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, I love the theme of this conference because this is the main reason why we gather, to connect, yes. to connect, to celebrate yes. our calling, to be refreshed by each other. And hopefully you and I are going to walk out of this conference, away from this conference with a renewed vision and a confidence that somebody has our back. Amen. Come on, are you with me here? Yes. Connecting as one. This is the heartbeat of God. It is what God values, and this is what brings delight to his heart. Now, the scripture says in the book of Psalms, it says these words in Psalms 133, verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. But I want to just kind of, kind of look at something here is that where he points us in verse 1. He says, Behold. You look at all nature, you look at all the all, all the, the, the beautiful, the vast universe and the stars and everything, but, but God says in his word, he says, wait, all that's beautiful, but behold this unity. When the brethren dwell together in unity, this is something to behold. This is the beauty. All that I made, the waves and the seas and, and all the coral reefs, all oh, that's, that's gorgeous. But what's gorgeous to the eyes of God, he says, behold, when the brethren are in unity. Are you guys with me here? Amen. You go into that chapter and down to verse 3 is what I love. Verse 3 says this, this it says this, it, it is like the, talking about this unity, it's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing life evermore. Now I want you to think about this. The Bible says that the Lord commanded the blessing life every, evermore. When there is unity, when there is connection, when, when God's people come together, there is a commanded blessing. Are you guys yes. with me? Nothing gets in the way of the commanded blessing of God. Yes. 
So if we connect as one, then we can be assured that all our efforts, all our endeavors operated are in the commanded blessing of God. Amen. The commanded blessing of God. It's when God says it, it is so. It is, now listen to this. Is that Think of this, that nothing is in the way of progress. Nothing gets in the way of the blessing of God. This is, this is fail-proof. Our faith, our efforts, our plans won't matter because of the commanded blessing that is in operation. Amen. When we are in unity, God speaks command. He commands a blessing, and then, that's it. There's the, nothing that the devil can do. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing right. that the enemy can distort because God said it. It's kind of like that man that came through the roof. Remember that? Yeah. He, he tried to, they tried to come in one way and everybody was blocking. You know, remember that story? Yeah. He couldn't even get in to get healed. So they tore the roof and, and they brought the man down in front of Jesus. Remember that? Yeah. And Jesus says, take up thy bed and walk. Guess what? How could he walk? It was so crowded. Everybody moved out of the way. Amen. Yeah. That is the commanded blessing of God. That God makes a way where there's no way. Amen. Amen. He speaks it for And people got to move out of the way. Amen. Oh. When we are in unity with God and we're in unity with each other, there is a commanded blessing that God moves in such a way that it cannot stop the operation of God. Amen. The commanded blessing that God gives us. Amen. I love this. Is that, that all opposing operations cease. Let me say it this way. It's habitat. Come on now. You can't stop this. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to hurt myself. Amen. But you know what I'm saying? My pants are too tight. Amen. Do it. But when we look at this, we realize that the enemy can't touch this. We believe unity brings joy to God because it reflects his character and his passion. This is the way that God works. Right from the beginning of Scripture, we're told that God is one God. How many know He's one God? Amen. Yet He's a community of three persons in perfect relational love. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Now, even in the creation and making us, the Bible says in Genesis 1.26, we see that God said, Elohim, that's what God is, Elohim, plural, he says these words, and God, Elohim, says, make, let us make man after our image according to our likeness. You see, it, even in creation, God is showing us, amen. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Somebody yeah. the Lord. Yeah. All right. Amen. <laughs> so, we see here that that God, even in creating us, he created us with the purpose of unity. He works in unity. This is who he is. Man became such a powerful force, unified, that we know the story of the Tower of Babel. Listen to this. This is crazy. This is in uh, Genesis 11, 6. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. This is, they start to build that tower, the Tower of Babel. They started to get together. They all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, the Bible says, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. That's the power of connection. That's the power of unity that God had to send them in disarray to stop something because these guys were going for the stars. And they were probably able to go, uh, who knows how high they would have uh, got because nothing was going to stop them. Man. God had to confuse them. Are you guys with me here? Yeah. See, can you imagine if we were like these people, if we set aside our differences, our agendas to accomplish one thing? If we all got together to win, to build, and to send, can you imagine what would happen? Amen. That if the churches together here got together with that very endeavor, that it's not about me, but it's about the kingdom of God. Amen. See, now we focus on a lot of important words. We focus on the word uh, tithe, fasting, prayer. Now listen to this. Tithes is mentioned 24 times in the Bible. Offerings mentioned 265 times. Prayer and fasting, you know, fasting, the F word. It's mentioned over a hundred times. Oh, man. But what's amazing, the word together, it's mentioned 484 times. Whoa. 
This is the heart of God. Together. In the book of Acts, you can see so many times, together, they prayed together, together, they were in one accord, together, together, together. This is the very birth of the church, together. Come on, look at somebody and say, together. Together. Come on now, amen. See, we got to hear this spiritual call to unity. First of all, before we can connect this way, we got to connect this way. Amen. Come on, amen. The Bible says here that God invites us to connect with him. There was a documentary that I saw last night your pastor turned me on to was the ministry of the late Billy Graham. I was so blessed. I mean, his method for uh, Billy Graham when he was uh, ministering over there in the South, there was a lot of con uh, conflict with Christians because of race. I mean, you go into a stadium. I mean, some of you, it's hard to picture this right now. You go into a stadium and you have the colors here and the whites over here. And they'd have to sit separately. I mean, you're like, wow, what a divided kingdom. And all names are written in the book of life. Hello. I mean, can you imagine? Well, let me see. Uh, uh, you're in the white section. Okay, I'm going to go to the colored. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> We're the neutral angel. But anyways. <laughs> that's Mormonism. But anyways. <laughs> Let's just delete that right there, okay? Now, now, the documentary of this ministry of the late Billy Graham, his method for ending racism in the South when he was doing the campaigns was not to force the Christians out of guilt or, or force them in any religious way, but he was convinced, he believed that when people had an experience with Christ with a connection vertical, then there will be a heart change, and he knew that if they were connected with Christ, then they could have a connection horizontal. He knew that was the solution. It wasn't him, but it was that if these people would have an experience with God, their heart would change. And that's what he believed, and that's what I believe, because sinners will do what sinners do. Come on now, amen. But if we're born again, and we have a connection with the Father, and we've had a God moment, there is going to be a change in our life that, you know what, now we're going to love what he loves, amen. We're going to love his people. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, it gives us this invitation. The Bible says that he himself is our peace, our completeness. Come on. He completes us. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> but he, is, he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Aren't you glad for that? He abolished in his flesh the enmity. What is that? The hostility that man has with God because of his sin. That hostility that is the law and the commandments contained in the ordinances. So as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making complete peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God and in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the hostility, the enmity. You know what that is? It's kind of like when some, some of you, maybe before Christ, will say BC, before Christ. You, you kind of didn't like that person. When they, everything was all great till they walked into the room. It was no exchange. There was no conflict. But you just felt it. She's here. <laughs> Come on now. That feeling of hostility. Well, that's what how man was with God. Oh man, he's just ruining my party. Just showing up. Doing and, and, and reminding me of eternity and this hostility. Well, what Christ did, he broke that. Amen. He broke that. He eliminated that. Yeah. Oh, come on, are you with me here? Yeah. Read the scripture. And he came and preached peace, completeness to you who were afar off and those who were near. Now, I love this. Verse 18, it says, For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Yeah. See, when Jesus came in on the scene, he didn't come with a new religion. He didn't come with a new law. He didn't come with new commandments. He came and introduced the Father. The, God was untouchable in, in those right, that time of thinking that you couldn't even say his name. He's so holy you couldn't even say his name. It was like so untouchable. He was, it was the picture of him on the mountain and, and, and the mountain quaked and, and nobody came near the mountain. Moses went to the mountain and God killed him, right? You know, this is the mentality. But Jesus shows up on the scene and he introduces a father. Yeah. Man. Come on. Yeah. 
This is what makes it so different. See, I come from a Catholic background. You were not allowed to read the Bible. Hello. I mean, my grandmother had a Bible about this thick in there. I mean, you could put a puppy in it. You know what I mean? I mean, on, on the table. And if I were to just open it, you know, because I like to watch, the, you know, look at all the pictures and the drawings. And smack, what are you doing? You don't touch that. You know? You'll never understand that. This was a mentality that can never have a connection with the Father. He was so distant. He was like some, something that we can never do. But Jesus came on the scene to introduce us to the Father. Amen. That we can connect to the Father. He didn't say, you got to connect to God. Or how they would say, you got to connect to Allah. Listen to me. Allah is not another name for God. Right. Don't get confused. Right. You go to Israel and there's, there's a writing right when in the Muslim quarters. It says, Allah has no son. But our Father has a son. Amen. Come on, amen. Yes. And because of that, we have an intimate relationship with the yep. Father that we can cry out from our hearts in connection. Abba, yes, Father. Yes. We can get mushy, man. Come on, amen. Yes. We can get mushy with God because of this beautiful connection that we have with God. That we're not going to some institutional, religious kind of uh, form or deity. No, we go to our Father yes. in heaven. So the scripture says through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And verse 19, I love it. He says, now. Somebody say, now. Now, now everything changes. Now because of that, therefore you're no longer strangers or foreigners. Amen. Or, or Filipinos. I'm just kidding. Come on. <laughs> Now, therefore, we are no longer strangers or fo and foreigners, but fellow citizens yeah. with the saints and the members, listen to this, of the household of God. Yeah. It is clear in the scripture that we must first be connected with God, convinced in every way that every wall, every distance near or far has been abolished. And we are now connected vertically with God. Well, you know what we call that? We call that a God moment. We got to have a God moment. You got a problem with people? You got to have a God moment. Come on, you're, talk, I'm, you're looking at a pastor who has problems with people. Come on now, I, I, I know how it is. I, I've been in, in that funk where you're just like, I just... I'm going to preach and I'm out of here. My wife would laugh at me. Okay, babe, we're just going to be there, you know, uh, 45 minutes, this and that, and an hour and a half. We're out, okay? And she's like, yeah, whatever. And then God moves. Come on now. Amen. I don't want to be around people. You know, it wasn't the people. It was me. Because I wasn't connected. For some reason, I got disconnected. I wasn't getting charged up. And so now these folks... <laughs> Come on now, to me. That's the problem. Tyrone trying to relive. Hello, are you with me? Don't look at me at holy. I know it doesn't happen here in paradise. God moments, vertical. Now because of that, we can connect horizontally. See, that's what I, I understand is that, you know, when people say, oh, i got to leave the church. I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave this, and they're all upset. You know what it is is that they've lost connection. But, you know, it's it's very rare that I have somebody come to me and say, Pastor, God just moved in such a great way. I just got to leave the church. <laughs> it's always like, they're all freaking out. It's never in the joy of the Lord. It's wow. very rare. Wow. And there have been some times where really people in that. But, you know, most of the time they're having a problem with this connection. Right. So they have a problem with this connection. So let's make that clear. We gotta have a God moment. Yeah. Look at some say, it's time for a God moment. Okay. God Come moment. on, amen. See, for us to connect from strangers to members, we have to change a mindset right now. From mere associates to family members. You are not my associate. You are not my client. Hello. You're my family. Hey. There's a difference. We got to change our mindset right now. I know it sounds like a cult, but come on now. Amen. Yeah, yeah I'm serious. Sometimes you go to some churches that, that don't have this mentality. 
I come from Praise Chapel. Woo. I'm used to, hey, bro. Yeah. Is that because I forgot your name? Well, sometimes. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> hey, sister. She's my sister. Hey, Amen. Come on. You see, we hear words and terms like citizens of heaven, army of the Lord, the bride of Christ, the good work of God, the body of Christ, the redeemed, ecclesia, the called out ones, but nothing goes as deep as family. Come on. Nothing goes as deep as Ohana. Come on now. We're family. We're family. I'm your brother. You're my sister. Come on now. When we think about family today, in the modern approach today, the family's eroded. The family unit is challenged every day by the social modern structure. The, the pressure today is anti-family. Being raised by a single mother, my family experience was limited. That's a good time to say, oh. No regrets. I was raised by a wonderful mother. But she worked hard to provide, and the family experiences were far and few between until I got saved. Walked into a praise chapel, gave my life to the Lord Jesus, and I became a brother. The brothers in my church were closer to the brothers biologically than I shared a room with. I was closer to the sisters in the church than my own sister. I can share my heart with my brothers in confidence. I couldn't even do that with my own brother. Hello. My family at church was closer to the family at home. It was an amazing thing. When I went to church, I didn't feel like I was going to a, a service or a mass. Come on now. I was coming to a family reunion. I mean, I grew, I got saved, and and and, and the, the guy who led me to the Lord, he was a Filipino brother. His name was Pogi. Yeah. They, they named him Pogi. Yeah. His mom named him Pogi, but he wasn't really Pogi. You know what I'm talking? Pogi means cute. But anyways, but then after church, it was kare kare, chikadobo. I mean, man, we got down. I mean, we, we I had a place to eat all the time. Amen. No more jack in the box for me. Amen. I mean, after church, it was like we're just just chilling, eating, having a great time. I just come over to the house anytime. I mean, they ask me the most stupidest questions. Would you like something to eat? I'm like, well, I don't know. You know how they do. Ohana, family. It was deep. Amen. It was a place of belonging. It broke all barriers. We got to come back to that mentality. Not that, oh, like, you know, you just share my experience. It's kind of like, it's, it's crazy. Like, churches become like the movies. One brother was telling me that they were going to this one church, him and his wife. It was kind of a large church with multiple services. And nothing wrong with that. But he says, hey, hey, baby, we're going to go to church. And she said these words. So are we going to the first showing or the second showing? He went, we're not going there. Because he's from a church that was intimate. Family. They knew your name. If you didn't show up to church, they knew it. You got a phone call. I did. Did you? Come on now, amen. What are you doing? You all right? What I do? I, that, that, that was my Bible that I took. <laughs> really? Amen. We get this. We lose that. And you can't connect without that understanding. Young people, understand this. Family, something that is not as probably as deep as when we come from old school. We understand family. I mean, even though you you couldn't stand your brother, remember that? You know, in the world, I mean, we, we couldn't stand our brother, but we protected him. You called him ugly. You called me ugly. You know what I'm saying? And we all come at you. You see, we understand. But today's family is really being really d distorted today, yeah. and not and because of that, we don't see it in the church, and it's hard to connect. Because we're going to get hurt. Uh-oh. I'm prophesying now. We're going to get misunderstood. Somebody's going to say something stupid. Someone's trying to be funny, and it's not going to be funny. And then we leave. You don't do that. If it's family. You stick it out. You still sit at the table. And you work it out. People today, one little thing is, they're gone. 
Hello. Come on now. See, for us to deeply experience someone's pain, we hear the common expression, the expression wait till it happens to someone in your family. Come on, you heard that before? Yeah. Then we'll be able to truly understand. See, when we are a family in church, we tend to be more connected, listen to this, tolerate and celebrate each other. Because we admit we're family. Family! Somebody say family! family. The same father who delights in us all. But I'm his favorite. Come on, we'll start a fight right now, right? Come on now. The same life. Amen. Eternal. The same desires to please our Father. Isn't that what it is? Is that what I'm trying to get out of you? You're trying to get out of me? It's, we're just trying to please our Father. Come on. That's, our, that's, that's what brings us together. Also, in family, the same home. Remember the scripture in John chapter 14 that I go and prepare a place for you? This concept of Western thinking blows me away. I was always to believe that he's going to build me a mansion. Mansion in the sky. They didn't have a song about that. God ain't going to build no mansion for you. Because that would separate us. Just like right now, we don't go house to house like we used to. Some of you live probably a couple miles away and you haven't seen each other, but only in church. Well, that's a whole other sermon. Can you imagine if he built mansions for us? That would separate us. But the scripture says, truly, I make many rooms. That's what it is. He's got a big house with a lot of rooms. And if you don't like me now, well, you better like me now. Because I'll probably be in the next room. Because God has a sense of humor. Come on now. Amen. I'm going to make many rooms. That's what it means in the, in the, in the Eastern, Middle Eastern understanding of the scripture. Not mansions that will separate us. Sorry. I know you signed up for a mansion. <laughs> but you're getting in the room. Because we're going to be all together like Ohana. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord some love, you guys. Amen. We're family. See, no matter what color, no matter what race, I mean, the, the inheritance that we have, equal distribution of Christ. Come on now. We're, we're church. We're family. And it doesn't matter where we've come from. This is what's so awesome. You can go to Africa and meet brothers and you feel this kid. You know, have you ever walked down a mall and met somebody and then and, and you just knew they were a Christian and you felt like you've known them for years? Because the Holy Spirit brings us together. The Holy Spirit connects us together. We know, we know we have this witness inside of us that we're related. It's like, you, where you been? <laughs> it's like, my twin. I didn't know I had a twin. You know those shows that they got? <laughs> Come on. This is a connection that we have as family. Now, what if you saw, let's, let me just throw this up. What if you saw your, your biological sibling at a store? You're just walking, you know, in the store shop, and you saw your brother. You're biological. Are you going to ignore him? No. I mean, you know, are you going to like, oh, there's my brother. You go down another aisle. You know what I'm saying? You kind of, like, you know, like when you're at church, you know, we might see a brother or sister from church. We're like, like into the shadows. <laughs> we kind of use our cell phone around the corner. <laughs> Is it clear? See why we do that? It's because family hasn't entered in yet. Wow. Family hasn't took hold yet. Oh, that's why I see my brother. He's my brother. Yeah. We talk. I remember one pastor used to complain all the time. He goes, everywhere I go, I want to go just get a gallon of milk. Takes me three hours. <laughs> I'm bumping into everybody. Well, at least, you know, hey, they look at it like, hey, you know, it's family. Come on. God is God good. Amen. You see, we want to be benevolent. We want to be loving. I mean, we're, as a church, it's like, it's almost kind of like a shame if we don't do something for the world. Thanksgiving. Well, let's have a Thanksgiving dinner for the for the for the homeless or for the unfortunate. We got to do something. I mean, there's millions and millions of dollars that are poured out in helping the world. I mean, all these things, mercy ships, all these things, and they all have a wonderful place. But we get so into that that we forget our own. Right. I mean, I've I've been in places in churches, man, that they hate each other. 
but let's go help the world. You know what I'm saying? They can't stand each other. They can't, but they're out there spending money to get sandwiches and get all the stuff that they need, you know, for the world. The Bible says here, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, right? But especially because we're special to those who are of the household of faith. Before you, as a church, make plans to take care of anybody out there, take care of those in need. Oh, I get the phone calls. Hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm just asking if somebody would help us pay our electric bill. You know, and I just say, well, you go to church, or you, you know, no, I don't go to church. Or I said, well, you know, our funds have been exhausted for, for our single mothers in our church and people that are what have you, so we don't have any benevolence right now, and because that's what we focus on. And you get these thoughts like, or these accusations. Well, what kind of church are you? What kind of Christians are you? And my response is always, well, a church that takes care of their own, man, because I believe that's more important. That we take care of each other because we love each other with family. And when we can do that, then we can do that out there. Yeah. How about making Thanksgiving for those that don't have Thanksgiving in your own church? Yeah. How about for helping somebody out when they're struggling? And a lot of times we think, well, I didn't know they were struggling, but if you connected with family, you know, brother so and so, junior, hello, sister so and so, because you're connected. Amen. 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 Goes without. It got so radical in the book of Acts that some people actually sold their homes. To make sure my brother and my sister can go and meet. Right, right. Oh, helping Jesus. <laughs> but you know, we don't give time to our associates. They're associates. That's a good place for me to See, the hey. beauty of this is that you might be a brother from another mother, but as Christians, we are from the same father. Come on. That is good. Yeah. And the beauty of this fellowship. Praise Chapel is that we celebrate family. For us to truly connect, we recognize ourselves as family members. Our fellowship, Praise Chapel, is, is and I, I've, I've been pastoring 26 years. I've been to conferences. I've been to organizations. I, I, I've hooked up with all kinds of different organizations. And there's something always, I come back to something beautifully and unique about Praise Chapel. Amen. Family. Amen. I sit in rooms with pastors from other organizations. They've got big churches. It's great. It seems all good, but they're so freaking lonely. And I sit in there and I said, man, I got brothers. I got, I got brothers, pastor friends, man. I mean, all over the world. These are my brothers and sisters. I don't, I don't feel alone or anything like that. And it's just an amazing thing that is that uh, this radical release that when Pastor Larry was setting things up, he didn't he didn't set it up as a hierarchy, like some, you know, headquarters that controls everything. No, he, he radically released it to a family of fellowships. Amen. Family. This is a family right here, fellowship of these churches, a family within a family. Amen. And there's no this. It's all this. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Come on. This is what we're a part of. Yeah. And that's why we can connect. So when we go, when we go to church and we go to conference, it's like, hey bro, how many people you got in your church? You know? Come on now. Showing off, you know, your spiritual whatever. You know, look at that. You know, I'm successful. You sit over here with us successful people. But not in our fellowship. We're family. Yeah. You can have 10 people, you can have a thousand people. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful feel all the way across Ooh. the plane. Because we're family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's how we and that's why I so appreciate what I'm a part of. Amen. You see, how many is I'm closing here because I didn't want to go too long because I gotta go to the bathroom. But anyways, <laughs> our fellowship is a picture of family. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we're connected. That's why I'm here. Now I can be myself. Not here to impress you. I'm your brother. My whole prayer is that how can I bless my brothers and sisters? Amen? Amen. And so as we look at this, as I'm in closing, how many believe in the fivefold ministry? Yes. Come on. Yes. I thought the fivefold ministry is that when you kind of like, you know, cause some trouble. Fivefold ministry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, the fivefold ministry 
We understand, and a lot of times people say, well, we have a five-fold ministry because we're like the New Testament church. we got our prophets, we got our apostles, we got this, we got this. And so we're a five-fold ministry. But that's not the reason for the five-fold ministry. The scripture makes it very clear in Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible says that he gave himself, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Listen to this. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when does, when does this end? When does this come to a close? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. This is what we have prophets. Not so they can just prophesy. We don't have apostles or teachers or pastors to pin slap you. There is, that, that's not the reason for that. The reason is to bring us to a place of unity. They're giftings to edify us and equip us to come to a place of unity to the fullness of Christ. You see, the world is not going to be convinced we're Christians because of what the songs that we sing. Or going out there and helping and, and doing stuff out there in the world. And, but the, the world's not going to be convinced. They're going to be convinced when we love each other. They say, wow, what a connection. I want that. That was the first thing I saw before I got saved. They looked like a bunch of nerds, but you know what? They were just, they were just like a, a, just a yeah. bunch of guys together. And I'm like, damn, those guys are nerdy. But they were like, man, hey, okay. you know what I'm thinking? You know, I don't want to be a nerd, but I do want what they got. I want that. I want that. So we go to this. For this purpose, for us to connect vertically, we need, amen, we need to come to that place in our lives, the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, connect vertically, and come to the stature, this, this fullness of Christ. And we think about this. This is something that just really bothers me. Christ and the Father were a perfect picture of unity. Walking is one. Jesus portrayed that for 33 years. Now, it's over 2,000 years, and the body of Christ still continues with that struggle. Coming together. In my closing scripture of our theme scripture, let me throw it out this way. How do we connect? How can we start the process to connect? Let's go to our theme scripture in verse chapter 4, verse 1. I, therefore, he says, the prisoner. Let me say it this way. Ownership. There is no ownership in the body of Christ. When we come to the Lord, we relinquish all rights. All ownership belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we see ourselves? Of one who says, God, I can connect because I own nothing. I own him nothing at all. I can connect. And the Bible says, and the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy, listen to this, of the calling with which you were called. You see, it's not your calling. Everybody's going after their calling. What is my calling? It's not yours and it's not mine. It's his calling on you. It's his calling. So you like it or not, Jonah, you're called. You might not like your calling. Paul didn't. Peter sure didn't. And then Esther refused. We got to walk worthy of the calling. And understand that I have no ownership. No ownership. And it's not my calling, it's his calling. Yeah. I'm on borrowed and you're on borrowed. Amen. 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 So we gotta connect. We know we can't do without. And the Bible says this with all loneliness and gentleness, with all long suffering. You know the Greek word for long suffering? Is suffering long. <laughs> What a revelation. <laughs> that is me. Amen. Long suffering. What? Yeah. It's called 70 times 7. It's, it's, it's when, when you hurt me, I gotta forgive you. I gotta put the gun down. Come on now. I gotta erase those terminator thoughts. I gotta forgive you. Because there's a connection that's been broken. I have to do my best. Not wait for you to come on your knees so I can whoop you. 
But if I know there's a problem, I gotta go to you because if I see and I understand there's a disconnection. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She needs to come to me. She needs to come and humble herself now. Uh -huh. <laughs> or I won't forgive her. No, the Bible says go. If you know somebody has eyes or you know there's a disconnection, humble yourself. Yeah. Long suffering, bearing. Let's make the connection. Amen. Amen. I'll talk a lot about that tomorrow. No, now you won't come. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself? <laughs> with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Let me, I gotta, I gotta throw this, I'm gonna add some MSG because that seems like that's what everywhere I go to eat right here. Okay, <laughs> MSG the message. Bye. And it says here, in the light of all this, this is the same scripture but in the message, in the light of all this, Here's what I want you to do while I'm locked up here in prison for the master. I want you to get out there and walk, better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands, and I don't want anyone strolling off down the some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. Not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Alert and noticing differences and quick at mending fences. Amen. Let's connect. Let's stand to our feet tonight. And I want you to think about it, first of all, before we go into anything else. Tonight, I want you to think about your connection with God. I want you to think about your personal connection with God. Young person, you're here, you, think about this. Not your connection with a song you like. Not connection with an event, but connection with your father. I want you to think about just for a moment to go back in your mind, in your heart. Lord, I remember that connection. I remember that, Lord, you kicked that door down. You climbed that mountain. You overwhelmed me. You ran me down. And you overwhelmed me with your love. I wasn't even thinking about you. I wasn't even interested. But you set me up. Lord, you did all this to connect with me. Now, what am I doing to connect with you? Father, I ask in Jesus' name, help us. The Bible talks about in the book of John, chapter 2, two verse 20. 21 and 26, I think it is. Jesus goes to a place where they were celebrating. It was right after the Feast of Lights. And the Bible says he goes to a place in the early part of his ministry with the disciples. And the people believed on his name. They were excited. There was miracles that took place, and they believed on his name. And the disciples were like, whoa, this is awesome. People are actually receiving us right now. But there was something interesting about what Jesus did. The Bible says that Jesus did not commit himself to them, for he knew the hearts of men. Very interesting. When I saw that, it really shook me. I read it many times. But this time I read it and I said, wait a minute. Jesus, these are people that believe in your name. These are people that experience miracles and you walked away? You, you, you did not commit yourself to them. In other words, to paraphrase, Jesus said, thanks, but no thanks. And he walked away from them. And I thought to myself, Jesus, you have the right to say no. You have the right to say no. So who am I to say, in such entitlement, you're God, you're supposed to love me because you're God of love, you're supposed to love me. And Jesus can easily say, no, I don't need to. Why should I? Because you're probably just a Kellogg Christian. Snap, crackle, and pop. You don't have to. And what hit me, and I hope you understand what I'm saying, is that I had to really ask myself in my heart, 
Am I worthy, God, in that sense? Am I serious enough? Am I showing in my heart, in my personal life, that 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 you would not walk away from me? Not that he would, but in a sense, understanding that who am I? Am I any better than those that believe in your name? Who am I to say that I'm better than those that experience miracles, yet you walk from, away from them? God, help me never to have a heart so hard and so demanding, so entitled, that I can just do whatever <laughs> I want to do and think that you're obligated to me. God, I pray that I'm worthy that you're obligated to me. That I've come to a place where I say, God, I, I won't waste your time. I will not waste your time. I will not waste your connection. God, I'm going to go after you. I'm not going to wait for you to come to me. I'm not going to try to call you into the building. I'm going to walk into your presence. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So tonight I want to think, I want you to think about your connection. Let's start with that. Because from this point on, if we don't got no connection, then what I'm going to say in the next three days is just going to be blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. They're old school people. And then, let's close our eyes. Father, we just come before you. And Lord, I just pray in our hearts, Lord God, that we commit to you. God, we commit to you. We don't want to be people that are just in this for the weekend flee. But God, I pray, Lord, right now, there's some of us, Lord, tonight, God, that, that are just kind of going with the motions. God, they're so good with the mechanics. I've been there. God, and I pray that, Lord, you just right now, by your Holy Spirit, begin to move into our hearts and give us this genuine Holy Spirit thirst and hunger for more of you. Lord, no matter how long we've been saved, let us never come to a place that I've had enough. Oh, God, let, let it be like David. Our cup runs over. God, I pray, apply your sloppy love over us. God, that all we want is more and more intoxicated in your grace and in your presence, that we become addicted to you. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, help us. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I don't know where everybody's at spiritually. But maybe you're here, and maybe you go to church, and, and I know that I'm talking to believers because what you, you're here on Wednesday night, I mean Thursday night, that's crazy. So I know there's some sort of commitment that you have to your church and to the work of God, but maybe this message spoke to you. I'm not saying that, oh man, you have a problem with people, but you're just saying, you know what, I've been busy. I've been running. I've been faithful. I've been going through the motions. Man, my battery's going low. And I'm doing everything I can to make it look like I still got some power. But I need to really start to connect with God intentionally. I need to intentionally connect with Him. If that's you tonight. I want you just to raise your hand. Just every eyes closed. And just raise your hands. I got to start to. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we thank you for these honest hearts. We're going to start to intentionally go after you. Father, we thank you. I want you to reach across to your neighbor right now. We're going to do some body ministry. Reach across to your ne ne neighbor and grab hold of somebody by the hand. And right now where you're at, I want you to begin to pray. Because the Bible says we, we, we reap what we sow. I want you right now to begin to sow prayer for an experience with God.